Yep, I'm speaking to you. How's it going? Well, that's good. My name is Ina, and I'm an emotional intelligence expert from EI Support. Hmm, you seem a bit confused. Do you not know what emotional intelligence is? Well, emotional intelligence, frequently referred to as EI, is seen as the ability to monitor yours as well as others' feelings and emotions. EI is classified as a type of social intelligence concerned with dealing with those emotions. Generally speaking, EI is the ability to express, regulate, and utilize emotional responses in problem solving, and it is seen as a learned rather than innate skill. The idea of having an emotional intelligence is a fairly recent concept. Though coined in the 60s, it was not further investigated until the publication of Daniel Goleman's book about emotional intelligence in 1995. EI is said to be defined by four main traits, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and social management. Does that make sense so far? So before we go any further into this, I wanted to ask you a few questions. Do you always think you're right? Are you sure? Okay, that's a start. Do you find yourself coming off too aggressive with others? <clears throat> Take your time. Interesting. And does all of this result in difficulty connecting with group mates and sharing ideas? I see, I see. Well, I want you to know that this doesn't have to be the case. Yeah, you can actually improve your ability to work with others and have better interactions by simply working on your emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence plays a role in our moods and interactions with others, and I'm here to tell you how. So this one research group actually conducted this super cool study to observe whether emotional intelligence correlated with how people were rated based on three things, their conflict resolution, their ability to provide support, and just a general evaluation of their social interactions. The way this experiment was set up is through something called an ugly orange experiment, whereby two individuals engaged in a negotiation task about an orange. The participants were told to negotiate until one person wins. However, what they weren't informed about is that if they practiced open communication, they would realize that they needed different parts of the orange and could actually cooperate so that both people win. Interestingly, the study was able to show that a higher emotional intelligence equated to having a better rating in all three aspects. You still with me? Great. Well, now you must be wondering, is there a way for you to learn and, you know, improve your own emotional intelligence? And there is. The learning process requires three individual sessions. In the first session, you'll learn to manage your emotions, you know, discussing coping strategies and their effectiveness. In the second session, you'll learn how to identify emotions by looking at others' body language and acting accordingly. And the last session involves understanding emotions by being more open to others. And you know, studies have shown that this method is effective at improving emotional intelligence, and the effects are long-lasting, even months after these sessions have passed. So I hope you see that emotional intelligence can be a helpful tool overall to resolve many of your issues you face working in a group. Great! I know for certain that if you practice these tools, you will succeed. But if you do need more assistance, please don't hesitate to dial 1-800-EI-SUPPORT or even just check out our website at demystifyingmedicine.ca. I'm Ina and we'll see you next time.